Hello everyone, Sean from Sean's Model Builds, and I'm here to unbox the Star Trek III Klingon Bird of Prey that I bought at the Raleigh Hobby Shop at the south end of Raleigh. I went there on Saturday after the GalaxyCon convention because I wanted to check out the local hobby shop in town, and I knew from watching Lou's videos on Aztec Dummy that there was one in the south end of Raleigh. And it was the closest one I could find to downtown anyway, so that's where I went. So I'll uh, open up it now and we'll take a look. All right, so we've got the front of the box, of course. Actually, one moment. Okay, so the front of the box is here. That's the barcode. The side of the box, you see it has it in a slightly different angle than it was on the other part. Here we go, here we go, see? Scenes from Star Trek 3, of course, because it's the Star Trek 3 Bird of Prey. So that's when it's disabled by the Enterprise. That's when it destroys the merchant ship. That's just after it disabled the Enterprise, and that's when it's approaching the merchant ship. Now, if you look on the back, you can see there's three ways to do the ship. With the wings down, the wings slightly up in flying mode, or the wings completely up with the landing legs. But you can see the dome base. I think I'd probably do the... Uh, the landing legs myself because that would be a natural way of doing it but save the dome just in case you can see the dome base here I wonder if those are the landing legs right there I have to check out the uh, stand for that here's some uh, clear pieces perhaps a engine dome or something oh well, here we go. Now, the good thing is, they're already molded in green. It's probably the same green it should be in. The interesting thing is, on the bottom side of the box, while you see scenes from the ship, you don't see a paint key. I don't see a paint color key anywhere. But it's really great seeing all the images. Yeah, that's so strange. No color key. Hmm. Let's hope there are any instructions, which are right here. Hmm. Ah, here we go. You see? There's the color guide. So gray-green, huh? Oh, look, 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 look. Those are the Tamiya color codes, XF76, X11, etc. So I can use the um, the decal, I mean, sorry, the color converter app to find the closest match to a Tamiya spray paint that would fix those colors for me. So that, that's really good that it has Tamiya colors. That's perfect. All right, so let's take a look. Oh my goodness. You see that? I am going to have to order Lou's masking set for the 350 scale bird of prey. Now the main hull is the flat green, that's XF5. You can see the main hull around the uh, bridge area there. Mm -hmm. And the gray green is A. Well, I'm glad it's very detailed. That's very good. And of course, I can use the color converter app to... Oh, wait, there isn't a match for folk art. It's not even listed. Ah, all right. Anyway. So you can see... Oh, just a moment. Mm. There, that's better. All right, here we go. So you see how you can build the ship in three different methods. Cruise mode, tack mode landing mode and it tells you which pieces to include for the wings to make sure that it'll do its job properly and then the port and starboard wings and guns the main body the underside probably oh here we go here's how the legs fit in 
I really hope it holds the weight. You can see how to put it in there. So these hatches, I guess, they lift off to expose the landing legs. That's good. Port wing, starboard wing. <clears throat> Main body again. And finally, the assembled wings. Okay, so that's that. And then, of course, you have the painting instructions which are on the other side, which, quite frankly, I prefer. Ball joint. See the wings are up? Of course, you don't have to use it. And look at the paint key. So decals four and five can be applied and packed. All right. Now, my hope... I mean, it looks like you can paint most of the ship while it is assembled. Which is a great thing. Of course, the question is... Hmm. So it looks like C is the flat green. So what is the white section, I wonder? What is the white section? Hmm. B. B is chrome silver. It's not that. Probably be a while before I paint this anyway. You do have the uh, AMT Ertl Star Trek Generations Klingon Bird of Prey. So I'll open up the bags and I'll see what we're looking at. Okay, so you have all the pieces here. Now I may try to match these... Uh, colors I may try to match these colors with the uh, I may try to simulate the color of the plastic we'll, we'll see which greens I have I, I don't have many to me of greens at all see how many but you can see the beautiful patterns in the wings so it shouldn't be too difficult to mask off everything and apply the colors that you need. I love these hinges for the wings. It's great. And here we're getting into the main... Oops. Another small piece goes around. You can see all the... Look at the, look at the detail there. So you could probably even do port and starboard navigation lights if you needed to. And here are parts for the body. Now that's that's a very thin part, so don't don't break that one. There's the top of the body. Or is that the bottom? Mm, that might be the bottom. It is the bottom. Because you don't see any holes for the wings on there. That's how you know. So you take a look at this part. This. Or maybe that's the middle. No, no, that's that's more the top. You can see some of the detail there, top of the bridge. There are the guns on each side. All right, so that is uh, put everything back in this bag. There's not that much in the other bag, and I'll be right back. Just going to flip it so you can see through the printing. Now, there's only one uh, tree left. It is this one, so other wing hubs, other detail parts on the ship. Tiny, tiny little pieces here. Not even sure what those tiny pieces are, but they look so delicate. So do those. Right there. Oh, look at those tiny things. Hold on, only by that. My goodness. Certainly delicate. It, the parts do look somewhat different, and they're not molded in gray. Like the Generations Bird of Prey. They're actually molded in the green. And let's take a look at the actual decals. Oh, the decal sheet is quite small, so there aren't that many at all. Here you go. And you can see 2023. There you go. So that's about all you have for the decals. So a lot of the detail is going to be done with the actual painting of the ship. And the masking and everything, so uh, when I get around to building this, I'll have to check and see uh, if Lou has any uh, painting masks for this particular model. But 
good. That's that's about all we got. <clears throat> There we go. Clear parts here. Instructions on top. Put the cover back on the box. And I'm going to see if it can fit in front of the Generations Bird of Prey. Which is actually <clears throat> right up there. I can just rotate the box a bit. Let's, let's see here. Oh, this is going to work. Here we go. Back, back, back. Oh. Well, maybe not. Because look at that. Hmm. All right, that won't work after all. Okay. Good idea. Actually, give me one minute here. I'm going to arrange the ships just a little bit. Give me one sec. Look at that. By doing it that way, I managed to get the bird of prey on there. Good. I fit another model. And of course you got the pictures in front of it, which are what I uh, got at the Galaxy Con. Well, that's the Galaxy Con convention, that picture of Brutus the Barber Beefcake. And this is the Star Wars Fan Expo, the picture of me and Hayden Christensen holding my Episode 3 DVD. He autographed it later in the convention time frame. And I think, given this, I'm going to rearrange this shelf, too. One moment. All right, there we go. So the Vulcan shuttle's there. The Strange New Worlds Enterprise is there. It can be slid out the side, no problem. Or at least it should be able to be. Bird of Prey's up there. The 50-year 652S Enterprise is there. Motion Picture Enterprise, Star Trek IV, Into Darkness. And there are other Star Trek models behind the posters. And of course, the big ones here. And the first edition of the 350 scale we fit. 150 pieces. <laughs> All right. So that that is, a, and of course, there's Voyager. Almost finished, because you see I painted in the phasers, although I still have to paint in the starboard phaser, and I've done the details on here, although I think I'm still going to make the blue a darker green. I need a darker color. And of course there's the model shelf of the 2500 scale Enterprise C from five years ago. The restored Enterprise D from this year. The thousand scale level down there. See? On the 1400 scale. The landing legs Voyager is behind here. This is where the other one will go. It's saucer going over top of that. The 1400 scale Enterprise E. The 1000 scale Excelsior. The 670 scale Voyager there. There's a... That's why I have extra decals, because some fall off. The 650 autographed Enterprise and the 1400 scale Enterprise B. So that's going to be the final stand. So I'll rename part 12A. I'll just rename it part 12. And of course the 2500 scale kits here. So by playing Tetris, I am finding a way to arrange the model kits properly. So that they can fit on the shelves. But as you can see... There's still not much space to put anything on the shelf as a kit gets taken away. So I am going to have to think about that, how to counter that, actually. I'll think of something. But, you know, having that one wedged in there, I don't like that. So I have one other idea. All right. So I don't have the uh, models in the way. Now, I don't think for one moment that Voyager could fit there. I think it's too big. However, could be wrong. Oh my gosh. There you go. You see? You see? That is the new idea. Now let's activate the flash. See? 
That's the new idea. As you work the model shelf down, you're able to put models in the new spot that opens up. And it's not brushing against anything. It's not wrecked in any way. That's kind of perfect now that you think about it. By a weird coincidence, the three Klingon vessels are actually in chronological sequence as to how they were introduced. Like the Bird of Prey, the Kronos One, and the Vorcha. Hmm. Then you have the JJ ships. I don't know why I have two Franklins, so if anyone wants a Franklin, I have a spare one. And of course you got the other ships, like the AMT ships. The polar lights, because these are the ones I'm going to build next. Model 40, 1, and 42, because 40 is the Robocop kit. You've got three different versions of the Enterprise. The 03 kit, built as the original. The 05 kit, which is ironically when you first saw the Mirror Universe one. And then Columbia, the newest one. See how it's more silver? See how that's more silver and that's more gold? That's the difference between Columbia and Enterprise. And then you got the Ravel Germany kits there. Vulcan Shuttle, Strange New Worlds Enterprise, Generations Bird of Prey, Enterprise B and Lakota, the 50th Anniversary TOS Enterprise, the Star Trek 1 and Star Trek uh, 4, model kits in the 537 and as far as behind let's see oh well got it that's kind of wedged in place give me one moment well look look at that you see there is space here i bet you could put all the enterprise kits under there there we go so the wrath of con ships are there You've got uh, uh, Woman and Warbird, you've got the bridge, Runabout, a new Enterprise C. Well, actually, there's two Enterprise Cs. Another Excelsior, you're going to build that one as NX. The other thousand scale ships. Yeah, good, 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 good. All right, so that is the... Uh, Revised Star Trek shelf of model kits. Nothing squished. Now I'm going to take Voyager out of there for now. All right, Voyager's back where it belongs. Of course, given the slight difference between the two. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah, that's even better. There you go. That's even better. All right, good. Although I'm going to put Voyager back on its normal box for now. All right, so that's good. You've got everything all arranged properly by now. Everything's wonderful. Put the poster back. So let's see, will this fit back up here? With the uh, Captain Christopher plane, we gotta move the Captain Christopher plane back this way. There you go. And then you can put this back up here. <clears throat> there. There you go, the Enterprise A print picture of me with Shatner, the autographed picture from the young Boba Fett, the autographed picture from the North of 60 actor from Geek River Geek Fest, and my Enterprise Jack-O-Lantern, autographed by George Takai and Walter Koenig from Star Trek Las Vegas 2017. And of course, there is my Next Generation poster with the three autographs from Beverly, Data, Indiana, and of course, the wrestling poster. Which will go right here until I can find a frame that's approximately that same size. Alright, so that is all for now for Sean's model builds. This video may be a bit too long to uh, 
get uploaded to you Dropbox before the week is out, but that's why I'm using the pause button. I can upload it directly from the phone. So, we'll see you all later. And I guess I'll continue working on Voyager now. The Voyager on the stand. Just have a bit more painting to do. So, see you later. Bye-bye.